Accessibility. So the question that students were asked is, how difficult is it for students in your grade to get any of the following substances? Boy, I'm getting dry. So for marijuana, 26% um, of our seventh graders say it's very easy to get marijuana. 64% of our ninth graders say it's very easy to get marijuana if they really want it. And 82% of the 11th graders, very easy to get it. It's highly accessible here. Uh, one other thing I want to share is um, the California Department of Ed gives um, people such as Ralph and myself, they give us um, sheets with, they call them performance indicators, and they rank our school districts according to um, the results of the California Healthy Kids Survey. By the way, this is public information. If anybody wants to see the results of um, their local school district, you can go on um, West Ed's website. It's www.wested.org, public information. But uh, in terms of will it's unified, uh, in the 2005-2006 uh, survey, their survey, their seventh graders ranked first in the state of California in terms of numbers of students who are smoking weed. That's first. Uh, Fort Bragg Unified, in when they did their survey in 06-07, they, their 11th graders ranked fifth in the state of California in terms of marijuana use. And Ukiah ranked seventh with their seventh graders. So a lot of our kids are using is what I'd like to say. And in terms of, oh, I don't know where Pal is, but in terms of trends, they do, I do get something that has um, trends that it's a multi-year comparison. And our stats are staying pretty much the same. I think the trend is just gonna be the same. There's hardly any percentage point difference from 01, 03, and 05, and that's the last I have of it. So that's it for me. Hi, my name is Karen Wandry. I'm the executive director of an organization called the Mendocino County Youth Project, which for the last 34 years has provided a variety of services for children and youth from ages zero to 21 throughout the county. And a big part of what we've done has been alcohol and drug prevention work. Before I go any further, I want to give my thanks to our district attorney and to Ralph Cantor for their remarks, which basically was half of my original presentation. They made those <laughs> points. And I want to thank them for that. I also wanted to say that if you're interested in hearing more about Ralph's um, ideas, on October 15th, a wonderful woman by the name of Linda Chamberlain, who's an expert on the adolescent brain, the effects of alcohol and drugs on adolescent brains. It's coming to the county for a workshop. Um, the morning will be for professionals and the evening will be for f youth and their family members. And if you're interested, um, I'll hang around afterwards and I'll be able to give you a flyer if you want one. Um, and she's just fantastic. Carol and I have heard her before and she's wonderful. Yeah. So I want to say that what I'm going to say today is um, really based on the experience um, of what I've heard from my own staff and the staff of people at AODP, from teachers, from people who work throughout the county with children and youth. And that's where I have my information from. I also want to say how made this reference to this paper that I wrote. Um, it's not published yet, but I am um, free to, to give it out in draft form, and it's basically about the challenges of doing prevention around marijuana abuse in a county which has the particular social norms that Mendocino County has around marijuana use. And um, if you're interested in getting a copy of that, um, come to me later and give me your email and I'll be glad to, to share that with you. I've interviewed a number of people who've worked around these issues in this county for years, including Carol, and so their feedback is there. Um, I want to talk a little bit about some of the effects I've seen, which have already been mentioned um, by Meredith and Ralph. Um, but basically, what we've seen in terms of children and youth here is a, a minimization of the harm, the concept of it's organic and natural, um, and a lack of understanding about the effects on the adolescent brain, that the adolescent brain is different from the adult brain. Um, an inaccurate picture of use, while the statistics are extremely high in terms of use in our county, as Carol has shown, 
um, that there's also a significant number of young people who don't use or have maybe tried it and choose not to do it anymore. Um, because of that norm, the social norm supporting use in this county, what we've seen happen with young people is they get in trouble earlier and have a lot more trouble recognizing that they're in trouble um, and asking for help because the social norms are, hey, everybody does it, go ahead, smoke before school, it's fine. Um, we've seen interesting things like resentment by those who don't grow, for example. Um, there's lots of easy money that young people perceive to be available if you grow or you come from a growing family. But we also have seen the opposite of young people um, saying things like, um, gee, these young people who come from growing families after harvest, they come to school and they have a wonderful hummer. And I babysit. <laughs> and I'm struggling to buy clothes for school. Um, the issue of not having friends at home is a real issue, particularly for younger people. Um, and I think about that young person, that child who's at home in a growing family where almost every room is a grow house, and mom and dad have um, guns and thousands of dollars around and pounds of marijuana around, and about what it must be like sometimes to go to sleep at night and um, worried about who's going to break into your home. Um, and is something going to happen? And um, we see the paper, reports in the paper all the time.